Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at the limits associated with parametric equations. Again, we start out with something very simple. Let's say we have the two parametric equations where x equals t and y equals 9 minus t squared. And the limits are given to us in terms of t from minus 1 to positive 3. So what are the x and the y limits in that case? Well, since we have x equals t, the limits for x will be the same as the limits for t. So in this case, we can say that on one side, if t is equal to negative 1, x will be negative 1. And when t is equal to positive 3, then x will be positive 3. But what are the y limits in that case? And can we then assume that the y limits will fall in between the two values associated with t equals negative 1 and t equals 3? And the answer is not necessarily. So let's take a look. First, what we're going to do is we're going to find the function of y in terms of x. So we write y equals 9 minus t squared. And now we replace every t by x. So this now becomes y equals 9 minus x squared. Now, if we go ahead and plug the final values, the, the, or the limit values of minus 1 for x and minus and plus 3 for x into the equation, we get the following y when x is equal to minus 1 is equal to 9 minus the quantity minus 1 squared that's of course that's 1 9 minus 1 that's equal to 8 and y when x equals 3 is equal to 9 minus 3 squared which is 9 minus 9 or 0 so when we plug those limits in here for y here we get 8 and for y here we get 0 so you may make the assumption that the limits for y are between 0 and 8, but that again is not necessarily the case. Let's go ahead and graph this particular function. So when we do that, we get the following. So when x is equal to negative 1, so this is our y, this is our x-axis. When x equals negative 1, y is equal to 8. And when x is equal to 1 to positive 3, then y is equal to 0. But what, what happens when x is equal to 0? Let's go ahead and plug that value in. When x is equal to 0, we go in here, we, we then look for that. We say y when x equals 0 is equal to 9 minus 0 squared, which is equal to 9, which is not between 0 and 8. So if we take the derivative, of the, the derivative of this, we can say that y prime is equal to minus 2x. And then when we set y prime equal to 0, we get 0 is equal to minus 2x, or x equals 0. Here we realize that when x equals 0, the slope is equal to 0. Which means at this point, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 9. And that's where we have 0 slope. So you can see when we connect these two endpoints and the zero slope, we then see that that's what the function looks like. And therefore, the limits for y did not fall between 0 and 8 because we didn't have a good representation by just using the endpoints. So you, what the, the lesson learned here is always be careful when you try to find the x and y limits for two parametric equations in terms of another variable like t because when we find the endpoints of t, that doesn't necessarily give us the limit points for y. And in this case, we saw that that was not the case. The ultimate limit, the y limits, are between 0 and 9 for y and between 9, negative 1 and 3 for x. So we may need to do a little bit more investigation to make sure we don't miss a particular limit in y. And that's how it's done.